Yo, yo, what's going on? Y'all, it's your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to mix trap R&B style vocals. Now, on top of that, I also have a surprise for you guys, and now in the HelpMeDevon.com store, the Trap in R&B Essentials vocal chain is now available for a variety of DAWs. You can follow along with me during this entire process to kind of get a good idea of how to go about mixing these type of vocals and stuff, and I'm gonna get uh, more in depth in this actual tutorial to show you this in about five different parts of how I created this specific vocal. So let's just hear the vocal for what it is and let's get an idea of what this trap R&B sound kind of sounds like. So this is the song right here. Let's take a listen. Okay, so for the most part, that is the vocal. It's trap, it's it's melodic, it's R&B. This is the trap and arm, trap, Trap R&B Essentials Vocal Chain available now in the HelpMeDevon.com store. Now, if you want to follow along with me during this entire process, I highly recommend and hope that you guys go to the website, download it to support the channel, and um, basically, I'm going to walk you through a lot of the things that we have going on. And also, lastly, make sure you comment, like, subscribe right now. Let's do it. Okay, so first things first, when it comes to this type of vocal, or most of the time what I do in a lot of my stuff is, I want to... Uh, uh, basically, let's figure out our auto-tune settings. So that's like the top of my list as far as like just going about this whole thing. Let's start with the auto-tune settings and then I'll go on to the other stuff that we have. So, auto-tune settings. Let's click here. And this is our auto-tune. And basically, if you look at our auto-tune, it's pretty pretty standard for the most part, and this is a taste thing. So you see that I have my retune speed at about 13, and then I have it on legato. Now, the big difference on this, and I'm using the auto-tune EFX for its low latency and, and things of that nature, uh, the big difference is if you're looking for a harder effect, then you can switch it to hard effects, and it'll give you a different sound. So check it out on hard effect. But for me, personally, I just like to go to Legato. Um, I'm more of a singer, so I just like how it kind of feels a little bit more natural and a little bit more smoother uh, within the music. So that's a taste thing, but just know if you're looking for a harder effect as far as the auto-tune sound, that sounds more auto tune -y, if that makes any sense, then you can go on to hard effects and it'll give you that type of sound. The next thing we're gonna go on over to is fixing the problems. And when I say fixing the problems, I'm talking about no recording is ever perfect. There's always things in your vocals uh, that need to be cleaned, that need to be fixed, room noise, clicks and pops, all kinds of little things that you need to do. So what I like to do is I like to clean the problems. Why am I cleaning the problems and I preach this so much in this channel? Well, if I hear low end rumble in my vocal from the room or anything like that, I wanna take that out before I start compressing. Cause guess what? If I add a compressor, Compressor with that low end rumbling at the um at the with the sound source, then basically I'm kind of going to be compressing that as well and bringing that up. And now it's taking away from what I really want to compress, more like that two kilohertz range or the high end. Now I have low end rumble that I'm also compressing that's also reacting to the compressor. So. I like to go and I like to fix problems before I do any boosting. That pain frequency, that three kilohertz range, uh, why don't I get rid of that first before I start compressing anything and bringing it up in volume? So that's what I'm gonna do with this first set, with the second set of things I'm gonna do as far as fixing the problems. Let's get right to that. So with fixing the problems, the first thing I did was this. I added an EQ. And this is literally the only thing I use to really quote unquote fix my problems. As you can see, I rolled off a lot of the low end, about 120 hertz, 
on the bottom. And then I rolled off a little bit more at the 250 hertz range. And then what I really, really did was, and I know this may seem extreme to you, but I took out a lot in this three kilohertz frequency range. And the reason why I took out a lot in this three kilohertz frequency range is because that's a frequency range that is known to be somewhat of a pain frequency, something that I feel fatigues the listener's ears. And when it comes to R&B slash trap kind of music, uh, as far as that melodic kind of sound, it's very important to make sure those vocals are smooth. And this is going to help smooth out that vocal a little bit more. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So let's go on over here. Let's take off all of these plugins, including the effects. And now let's listen to this before and after. I'll keep bypassing it back and forth. Listen close. Let's solo it. Here we go. I just want somebody that I might love for tonight. I don't get to a test. I just want you up in my life right now. What you try to do, or we can go back to the crib. You say you've been down here now, that's something I can fix. I already know you get it popping. Okay, so when you listen to that, and if you're listening, you can go back and listen to it a bunch of times. It's there's this harshness that is just in the vocal. You feel like when I engage the EQ and take out those frequencies and kind of do some EQing, it feels smoother. It feels a lot more uh, pleasing to my ear. And that's because we fixed, quote unquote, some problems that we had in there. The low end rumble, we got rid of that, which made the vocal feel a little bit more brighter uh, by, low, by rolling up that low end. Then we took some of that 2K frequency out, which or to me, 3K frequency out, which helped get rid of some of that harshness or that uh, that annoying resonance. And with taking that out, the vocal had uh, a chance to kind of breathe and feel a lot more smooth. So that was me fixing some problems. The other problem that I fixed that you may not have noticed is, is me taking out some of this frequency up here too. And the reason why I took out some frequency up here, more in that eight kilohertz range, is because I'm trying to get rid of some of that sibilance as well, because I know in time going down the line when I do start boosting, that that's also gonna be boosted and accentuated even more. So I'm trying to get a control on things and get rid of those S's and T's even before I start doing any boosting. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go on over to is compression. How do I, or how do you go about compressing these types of vocals? Let's get right to it. So for this particular uh, vocal, as far as the uh, R&B and Trap Essentials vocal chain, I use a CLA 2A, a CLA 76, and an and a Renaissance de -esser. Now, what I did with the uh, CLA 2A and why I like the CLA 2A so much is because it adds somewhat of a mid-range presence to the vocal, as well as does a really cool job of compressing vocals. I like the CLA 2A because what it does is it's a fixed uh, attack and release, and it's very conducive to vocals. Why? Has more of a slower attack, which is great for vocals because then it lets those vocals kind of shine through in the mix, and then it has uh, a release that's kind of like medium to fast. It's literally so perfect for vocals, and that's why I love uh, the CLA 2A, and it adds a little bit of a oomph and a, and, a, and a power to a vocal as well. So, take a listen to this without first. I just want somebody that I might love for tonight. I don't get to a test. I just want you up in my life right now. What you try to do, or we can go back to the crib. So that is so obvious what it's doing. Granted, I let some of that volume come up. Uh, it, it just adds such a presence and such a such a control to the vocal that I really, really enjoyed, and that's why I used it. Something else to note is make sure that you have this compressor on the CLA 2A in flat. And what the flat will do is it'll react to your entire frequency spectrum of whatever your sound source is, as opposed to if it's more on the high frequency side, then what it's going to do is it's just going to react to the higher frequencies. But I want it to react to my entire vocal uh, as a whole. The next thing I went on over to is the CLA 76. And for this one, I tried out the Bluey. And the Bluey is a little bit heavy of a compressor. I've always felt like the Bluey is a little bit of a thicker tone and it compresses a lot more. It's a little bit more touchy. So this is what I got for it. Bypassed. I just want somebody that I might love for tonight. I don't get to a test. I just want you up in my life right now. What you try to do, or we can go back to the crib. You say you've been down here now, that's something. So you can hear it. It adds more presence. It adds more uh, 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 control. And I'm using a pretty slow attack and a pretty fast release as well for this compressor, just to kind of give me some more of that pop in the vocal. The next thing we used was we used a de-esser. 
And basically with this de-esser, I'm moving on over to trying to control that pain frequency again. I'm trying to make sure that that resonance that we have now boosted in the other compressors is controlled. I can hear like that 3K frequency creeping up again and kind of making its way. And it, remember, this is a trap R&B kind of vocal. So I want it to be very smooth, but aggressive at the same time. So I'm trying to control some of that aggression and resonance that I know is going to fatigue people's ears with a vocal at that 3 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz range, and then get more of the other stuff out of the vocal. So I'm going to use the de to combat that particular frequency range right there. So without first, I just want somebody that I might love for the night. I don't get to a test. I just want you up in my life right now. What you try to do, or we can go back to the crib. You say you've been down here now. That's something I can fix. So you hear it puts that control on that. That, pay, that frequency that when it's engaged, you notice like, oh wow, yeah, after a while, that will probably fatigue my ear and be kind of annoying. So I'm just controlling that frequency range that I know in my heart is going to be a problem probably in the final mix or when it even goes to mastering and I start boosting other things as well. So the next part is EQing. How did I EQ this vocal? And a very thing, a thing that's probably gonna surprise you a lot is I didn't do much uh, to this vocal when it came to EQing. I knew in my head, I just want some high end and I want the presence to be correct as far as where it's sitting in the mix. Now granted, it's different for every single song, but this is a general vocal chain that I've created to basically get you in a ballpark of, you know, trap R&B style uh, music. So let's check out the EQ that I use for this particular vocal. So off rip, you can see that I put a huge boost at around that 15,000 hertz range. I took out some more of that 3K frequency and I brought out a little bit of that 800 hertz for presence reasons. I felt like it was a little too present in the actual mix, so that's why I pulled it back just a wee bit. Now granted, of course, you get all these settings if you downloaded the actual vocal chain um, in uh, at helpmedevon.com. But let's take a listen to this EQ and see what it sounds like without first. I just want somebody that I might love for the night. I don't get to a test. I just want you up in my life right now. What you try to do, or we can go back to the crib. You say you've been down here now. That's something I can fix. I already know you get it popping. Yeah. I'm your biggest fan, so when you drop it. So you hear that, it smooths out the vocal, adds that high end that we're looking for to give me a little bit of that hiss that I wanted out of the vocal. And it kind of backs off in the, in the mid range just a little bit to kind of make the vocal feel like it'll sit a little bit tighter in the mix. I didn't want it to be so present, especially with trap R&B. I feel like the music and the vibe is so important that um, backing off in the mid range is somewhat important to me when it comes to these type of vocals, depending on the type of microphone that you're using. Now, if you're using a microphone that has a lot of mid-range, then yes, this is the type of thing that I, I would go for. But if you're using like a Neumann TLL 103 or anything like that, chances are it has a very calm mid-range to me and a very high top end. So that's kind of like a perfect microphone to me also for like trap R&B vocals. But I created it in this style, that very subtle, but at the same time, you see that it's not much EQing uh, that was done. I really got that high end, controlled that low end, and that was it. So the very last thing that I did to this vocal, as far as the processing of the dynamics and stuff like that, is taming the vocal. And when it came to taming the vocal, it adds a little bit of compression and some de-essing and some multi-band compression as well. So this is me just putting some final touches on that processing to get it to sit how I'm looking for it to sit in the actual mix. Let's get to it. So when you look at the R compressor, this is what I have on it next, I'm using the R compressor for one thing and one thing only, to really catch those peaks and transient um, uh, in the vocal. So I've already done a bunch of compression, but now I have a compressor here, this R compressor, with an extremely fast attack and a fast release nonetheless. And what this fast attack is gonna do is, it's gonna help me tame some of that uh, uh, initial transient uh, information in the vocal so that it's not poking out at every phrase. So peep this without first. 
I just want somebody that I might love for the night. I don't get too attached. I just want you up in my life right now. What you trying to do? Oh, we can go back to the crib. You say you've been down here. Now that's something I can fix. So you see what it does? It really just helps the vocal kind of sit back a little bit more in the mix. And I like to do this sometimes on the end of my vocal chains when I feel like, ah, you're a little too present as far as you're standing up a little too high and you're, you're still a little too dynamic, meaning the difference between the quietest and the loudest sound and it kind of feels like it's disconnected from the music. What you could do is you can add a compressor like I did with a really fast attack and a fast release and basically control those peaks so that it feels a lot tighter. I just wanted a vocal that felt a lot tighter and that's a thing that I noticed with a lot of R&B trap kind of vocals is you know they're they're very tight in the mix but they're silky smooth and they sit in the right place so that was important for me to do in taming that vocal. As you can see, I got about three dB of compression, but of course, for every person, it works different. But you see what I got right there. Next thing I did was I added a C4 plugin. Uh, all this C4 is is a multi-band compressor. Don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid of it. All I really did was some processing in the three bands, which are right here. One between 100 and 3,000 hertz. One between this... Uh, one at the top of 11,000 hertz, and then it's in between here. Sorry about that. Oh, yes, these three numbers. So take a look at this, and it'll help you understand a lot better, and then I'll break down exactly what it's doing. Check this out without first. I just want somebody that I might love for the night. I don't get too attached. I just want you up in my life right now. What you try to do, oh, we can go back to the crib. You say you've been down here. Now that's something I can fix. So what this helped me do was create a tighter, bright, a uh, tight, uh, tighter high end in the music. Now I know what you're saying. Well, I kind of like how it sounded um, without it. Check this out. Let's play it with the music without first, and I'll bypass it back and forth. I just want somebody that I might love for the night. I don't get too attached, I just want you up in my life right now. What you trying to do, or we can go back to the crib. You say you been down here, now that's something I can fix. It definitely feels better with it, and that's because I was able to get more bite out of the top end of that vocal by compressing it some more and then raising the volume where it was a little bit tighter now in its dynamics. So this is a little trick that I do sometime as well, is basically compress that top end uh, of the vocal from that three kilohertz and beyond, and then basically find that place where the compression is doing its job and compressing just that range, but then I give it back some of that volume after the compression so it's a lot tighter at the top end and it feels really nice in your mix, especially with trap R&B vocals, which you can download this template right now in the description below, helpmedevon.com. Okay, so that's what I did for that. As you can see, as far as the settings uh, are right here, if you got the template, you'll see the settings. It's about a really fast um, attack and a really fast release when it comes to my settings on my multi-band compressor for the most part. Okay, the very last thing I did was add a de-esser. And this is gonna be extremely self-explanatory. If you're new to mixing, then I'll, of course, show you exactly what this is gonna do. All this is gonna do is catch my peaks my, as far as my S's and T's. All this high end that I just added into the vocal needs to be tamed. Remember, I'm taming the vocal. And that's what the C4 compressor, the R compressor, and this uh, de-esser is gonna help me do. It's helping me to tame the vocal. So this de-esser is just catching these S's and T's. I have it right here at the almost about 8,000 hertz range and watch it catches these S's and T's. I just want somebody that I might love for the night. I don't get too attached. I just want you up in my life right now. What you try to do, or we can go back to the crib. So you see what it's doing. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's catching those S's and T's. That's what it needs to do, and that's what I felt like, okay, this is peeking out a lot, so let me just clean, clean uh, catch those S's and T's, especially for people that have uh, bright mics like Sony C800s or Neumann TLM 103s or really cheap microphones which tend to have a lot of high end and sound pretty brittle. So I put this de at the very end of it to kind of combat that and to kind of make sure that you are compensating for that extra brightness that you have thrown into your vocal. Now, as an added bonus, of course, all of these effects, as you can see right here, uh, my short verb, long verb, fourth delay, if you download the vocal chain, 
you will get all of this stuff inside. Also, if you don't have plugins, you're fine. We have stock versions available as well that we've emulated to sound so close to the original uh, if you're just getting started and you only have stock plugins. So all of this to create a vocal that sounds like this. So I hope that this tutorial was extremely helpful. Make sure you go to helpmedevon.com uh, to get the Trap and R&B Essentials template vocal chain. Uh, make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Please comment below, let me know what you wanna see next. Uh, and also, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys for supporting the channel. Getting this vocal chain does help to support the channel and keep these videos going. Make sure you also follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram. And also make sure you guys follow our Discord community with a bunch of engineers, artists like yourselves, giving game and trading ideas. So that was my tutorial on how to mix trap R&B style vocals. I hope you enjoyed and until next time you guys.